You know, I, I think we are. This conversation is sending us back into a time when women didn't have much of what we have today. And I think many of us women who are in this body today are here because women had to fight. Had to fight to create a space for us to be recognized and valued and capable of doing the work that we do every day in a single body. Because there was a time when there was all men in this body and we didn't have that privilege. But it was the women who stood up and fought. This is the pleasure you have today that we have today because of the work they did then. Quite frankly, I really think that we're not going far enough. I think we should have full constitutional privilege, not only at the state level, but at the federal level. I think we need to go just full ahead to make that happen. But really the lack of an Equal Rights Amendment, which would prohibit, I believe, will prohibit the discrimination on the basis of sex, gender, whatever word we, we need to use, it will prohibit that. It's especially harmful to folks that looks like me, women of color, who face discrimination both on the basis of sex, gender, and on the basis of race. That's the challenge that I have as a woman of color, as an African-American woman. We have not gone far enough to create equality for all women. With this amendment, it will correct the statement in our Constitution that all men are created equal. That is what this would do. I think that's a mistake that some man wrote into our Constitution, that it would be men who are created equal. And I think what it would do, it would correct it to say that all people are created equal. You know, um, back a few years ago, I carried a bill called the um, Equal Pay Bill that would recognize and validate that women need to be paid at the same rate for same work as men. Because that is not the case today in 2019. We still are not there in 2019 when it comes to equality for women. Currently we have women who are making 82 cents to a dollar, but that's for a white woman compared to a white man who makes one dollar. If you are African American, if you are Native American, you are making 60, we are making 60 plus cents to the dollar. And if you're Latina, you're making 57 cents to the dollar. If you are a Somali woman, you're making 54 cents to the dollar. There's nothing fair, just, or equal about that or equitable about that. But this is where we are right now. I think you guys are looking back and we need to move forward. The problem we have gender uh, discrimination that was illegal, that has been illegal. Gender discrimination has been illegal since 1969. But we still have these wage pay gaps that exist today. 1969, when gender discrimination became illegal. Wow. The problem is that when women receive a lower wage for equal work, this lower wage can follow her, follow me, follow us for the rest of our lives. That is what it does. So this amendment, it won't solve the wage gap, the wage gap, but it's an important step to say that we equal. This amendment um, will help put women on an equal economic footing as men. Why not? We work as hard, we are smart, we are intelligent, we have passion. We do the work, we do the work for all the good reasons, but yet we are not equal. 
we're not validated at the same rate as men. And so it is my hope that this is a simple bill. It is really simple. And we can't always be scared of, of progress. We can't always be scared of moving forward. We can't always be scared of standing up to do the right thing. We have women who are participating in the armed forces. Women will always have a, and girls will always have an opportunity to do sports. That's kind of like this. I mean, they, I don't, why would, we have women who are serving at the ultimate levels. But that was not always the case, neither. We had to fight for that. We had to fight for it. We had to stand up. We had to prove ourselves. And we're still trying to prove ourselves that we're capable. And so the Equal Rights Amendment is simply saying that we need to be equal. But our, because our Constitution does not give us that. It's not a given. So I don't think we're going far enough. This is just saying, as, as the state of Minnesota, we need to recognize that and validate that. I personally think we need to go to the federal government and have it embedded in our Constitution at the federal level. Because we deserve that as women. We are riding on the back of other women who came before us. That is what we're doing today. That's where we are today in 2019. And so my hope is that, you know, as we d d debate and talk about what sex, gender, all the things that we fear could happen, may happen, could happen, that this is the right thing to do for our girls, for our daughters, for our nieces, for our grandkids who are female, that we create a pathway for them. So 20 years from now, when they're in this body, we're not talking about, you know, that some women are making 60 cents to the dollar, 57 cents to the dollar, that men are making a dollar, and here women are, who are head of households, who are running businesses, who are entrepreneurs and small business owners, but yet we are at a disadvantage just because we are, our one, we are women for no other reason. So <clears throat> it is embedded in our Constitution. I think it was a mistake of men who didn't know any better, but we know better now. We know better now. And so my hope is that when we know better, we would do better. Women, we stand here because of the other women who came before us, who fought so hard. And now our little girls are dependent on us to fight for them, to make sure that they are valued equally and are worth everything that they put into this society, this state. So I support this bill wholeheartedly. And my hope is that we can take it before the people, you know, and let the people decide this.